<laughs> you see, it literally sounds just like my mother. You're breaking up everything. So and, then you can, and then you can add more sauce, and if you want more, I'll give you more. And if you them. want more, I'll give you more, just <laughs> like my yo. Hey, I'm Caesar with the Food 52 Test Kitchen, and this is Recipe Drop, where I and my friends here at the Test Kitchen come at you with new recipes weekly. And today I have for you kiwi salsa verde braised pork. This dish was inspired by Mexican food, of course. I added a few of my own little touches, but super comforting and really wonderful over rice or tortilla. We're gonna start with our pork shoulder. This is about a seven pound bone-in pork shoulder. You can also do boneless, that'd be fine, but you do wanna make sure that it doesn't have the skin. So this one came with skin, I just cut it off. Uh, one thing I did do beforehand, I salted it pretty generously with kosher salt, just so that it could really penetrate. It's really hard to oversalt this, so don't worry. I use diamond crystal kosher salt, it's the most forgiving salt, but also, I went ahead and toasted some coriander seeds, cumin seeds, and pink peppercorns. You can use black peppercorns if you don't have pink. Pink peppercorns are really have a really interesting flavor. They're kind of fruity, which is really nice. So just toasted these to wake them up. Just gonna give them a good grind. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, uh, feel free to use a spice grinder. Coriander and pork always go really well together. So just gonna rub this guy down with our spice mix. So I'm just gonna let this sit for a few minutes while I work on my salsa. So the two main ingredients in this salsa are tomatillos and kiwis. If you've never worked with a tomatillo before, they have a little jacket and you just peel it right off. And they're gonna be a little sticky. Just give them a little rinse. This is how I peel a kiwi. This little, um, root part, I slice off, and then I cut it in half. And the reason I slice the root part off is I'm gonna go in with the spoon and scoop it out. I find that the root makes it harder to scoop it out. So kind of just take your spoon and go in between the skin and the fruit. Just make your way around. Uh, this works best with um, riper kiwis. You can also peel it with your paring knife. Do whatever you want. In goes my tomatillos. I'm also gonna add in my garlic cloves. I've spoken about these peppers before. These are called, um, these are small sweet peppers that look like scotch bonnet. Uh, you'll see this a lot in Latin Caribbean cooking. Um, in Spanish, we call these aji dulce or ajicitos. They look spicy, they're not, they're sweet. So I'm just throwing these in as well. I have one serrano. You can also use jalapenos, which are a little milder. You can double up if you're doing jalapenos. Um, I don't want this too spicy, so just going in with one serrano. Here I have a bulb onion. So a little white onion with the greens still attached. Um, you can also use scallions if you can't find one of these bulb onions. Um, I really like them. Let's cut this guy in half. It's a little more manageable. Just put them cut side down. What else I got? Oh, I got a poblano. So the poblano I'm actually gonna char over uh, an open flame. If you don't have a gas burner, you can pop this under the broiler. When you char your vegetables before you make your salsa verde, it just kind of adds a little depth, wakes everything up a bit. Same idea when you toast your spices. For the vegetables in the pan, I'm not trying to burn it, but I do want some color. For the poblano, I'm, I wanna burn the shit out of the poblano. Like, I want it black. After we burn the poblano, we're gonna put it in a plastic bag, uh, and it's gonna sweat, and that's gonna make it really easy for the skin to just slide right off. And it's also gonna make the pepper really tender, really easy to work with. So this dish is definitely heavily Mexican-inspired. I'm adding my little Puerto Rican elements to it with ají dulce. Um, I'm gonna use recao, aka culantro, but this is pretty heavily Mexican. I'm gonna start pulling these straight into the blender. If your blender is not that strong, uh, you can let these cool for a little bit and give them a little chop before throwing them in. That's how you want your pepper to look. 
So what I'm gonna do with this pepper, I just have like a produce bag from the grocery store that I saved. Put it right in there, seal it up. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna sweat and it's gonna make it easy for me to peel it. All right, so I'll set this aside for now. In the meantime, let's work on our pork. So I have a Dutch oven. I'm gonna heat it over medium high. Got this beautiful stove. Stove, stop, stove. I never know how to say it. Stove. <laughs> stove, stout. So I'm just gonna heat it over medium high, give it a good drizzle of oil. Once we come to temp, once our oil is shimmering, we're gonna start searing our pork shoulder. Again, pork shoulder is the best cut for this, has the perfect amount of fat. It's pretty affordable. Boneless is more convenient. Bone-in definitely has better flavor as it braises. That bone is gonna add a lot of flavor to the sauce. This recipe will also be great with, um, with beef. You could do like a pot roast. If you don't eat pork, you could definitely use something else. Don't miss out on this recipe. I think, I think we're in a good place. Yo, perfect fit. I was afraid it was, I was afraid it was too big. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Oh yeah. That's what you want. Nice golden brown, you don't want to burn it. So be careful. Especially because this has a lot of spices on the outside, you don't want to char your spices. So I'm gonna let this do its thing for about another five minutes. We're gonna remove it and then we'll talk salsa. I seared my pork shoulder on all sides and I killed the heat. I don't want my fond to burn, so I just turned the heat off and covered it. We're gonna revisit that in a bit, but let's talk about our salsa. So I have most of my things in the blender. My poblano has been sweating. And now you can see, there's a few ways to do this. Okay, so I have my gloves on. I'm just gonna peel, scrape the char off. If you leave too much of, the, of this on, it's gonna be bitter. A, a little bit is fine, and we'll add some, some nice smokiness, but definitely don't overdo it. And you can see all the seeds inside. Take some of the seeds out. Or keep them in if you want, some, if you want more heat. Take the core out. You could even run it under some cold water if you really wanna get it off, but I don't really care that much. Pop that into our blender. Now, let's go in with our kiwis. Again, I'm doing equal parts tomatillo to kiwi. So in this case, I have about a pound and a half of each. About half a cup of cilantro, along with two culantro stems. I'm just gonna go right in with that. And I'm gonna go in with two teaspoons of salt. Go easy with the salt at first. You can always add, you can't take out but definitely two teaspoons kosher salt to begin with. All right, you don't want to overdo it. You still want some texture. Damn, it smells good. I almost forgot a very important component, which is lime. So key limes have like a nuanced tartness, a sweet floral aroma, definitely a bit more complex than your average lime, but obviously they are much smaller. Uh, here I'm using about five to six key limes. If you were using regular limes, use around two. Uh, this part really comes down to preference. I really like brightness and, and tartness. I like to always grate my citrus. These are a little more challenging obviously, but do your best. It's just such a waste if you don't. Again, you don't have to use key limes. If you can find them, amazing. If not, regular lime is great. I think the regular limes we have here in the US are referred to as Persian limes. Correct me if I'm wrong. I wonder if the flucer is gonna work with the key limes. <laughs> it's gonna fall right through. Okay. Did it work? Kind of. Actually, I feel like the other one might work better for this. I have to go old school. Sorry, Flusser. 
Oh, but you could do like three of them at the same time. There we go. I'm fine. You missed it. I did three, but half of it went in my in my eye. There we go. All right, I'm not gonna blend it anymore. Just start in with your spoon. A little more salt. I think even a little more lime. Perfect. Has a nice spice, nice brightness, perfect on the salt. These types of things you just gotta keep tasting as you go. All right, so we're back with our Dutch oven. We have all those drippings on the bottom. I'm gonna bring this back up to heat, medium high to high. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape up all of that fond with a can of beer. Any light beer will do. Here I have Medaya, Puerto Rican beer. Okay, our pot's hot again. Going in with our beer. So we're just gonna scrape up any of the bits stuck on the bottom. At this point, I'm also gonna go in with my secret ingredient for a lot of things. And we've used this before together with our chicken, our turmeric chicken, and that's a little chicken powder. Chicken powder is great because of the MSG. If you're using one with MSG, if that freaks you out, don't use it. About a tablespoon. This is a big hunk of meat so it can handle salt. Also gonna go in with uh, three nice big fresh bay leaves. Dried is fine as well. And then in we go with our salsa. Get it all out. And goes our pork. Yo, my measurements have been on point today. Just wanna spoon over the salsa. So I'm gonna bring this up to a boil. If you don't bring it up to a boil on the stove, it's gonna work extra hard to come up to temp in the oven. So always bring it up to a boil on the stove first. You know, I think I'm gonna go abuelita style, do a little hot water in here. Nothing goes to waste. One last thing that I like to do, um, you may have seen this with my pernin video back in, back during Christmas time. For things like this, where the meat comes up pretty high, I just like to take a piece of parchment. It's just like a little insurance policy. Just put it on top so that if the meat it touches the lid, it doesn't stick. All right, into a preheated 375 degree oven. I'm gonna check on this after three hours. Okay, let's have a look. Careful with the steam, whoa. Remember what I told you about that parchment paper? Super tender. So this is about three hours. It's falling apart, but it still has some, some structure to it as well. If you wanna like pull pork, just keep it going. Make sure you check your liquid um, levels so that it doesn't dry out. If you do notice that you're drying out, just add a little extra water or broth yeah, this looks pretty damn good. I would usually have this with like some white rice or even some like tortillas. Like if you have some flour tortillas, that'd be great. I'm just gonna have it straight up right now. Yo, Elvin, wanna have a little taste? <coughs> ah, you're not busy now. So this is a salsa verde, kiwi salsa verde braised pork shoulder. Kiwi salsa there's verde. There's kiwi and there's tomatillos and there's a bunch of other stuff up in there. Yeah, Look at that, like that. that. I would usually have rice for this, but you know. I know, you know day. me, you know me. I, 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 I was recipe testing this like, ashy little. <laughs> <laughs> oh recipe, man. I was recipe <laughs> testing this flatbread. <laughs> it's not bad, but I gotta work on it. Okay. <laughs> really sad, really sad. It's not, 
you know. Yeah, there's only one. There's only one. <laughs> there's only one. <laughs> so we're going to break bread. All right, we're going to break bread. Very <laughs> biblical. Very biblical. <laughs> Damn, don't make I fun. I love it. I love it. Don't make fun of my, <laughs> my flatbread. It's crazy, too, because this, this stays pretty green, too. A little for you. Wow, a little for me. This, <laughs> you, this is a little for me? <laughs> for me. You got a little, but I got a lot. You're, you're, my, you're, my, you're my guest. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. Oh. Nice. Yes. If you have rice or, or real flatbread or, or tortillas, that'd be ideal. We're, we're humble here at Food This is 52. a humbling tasting experience right now. You don't forget where we come from here. All right. Salute. Salud. Oh, Salud. Shit. Oh. Juicy. <laughs> All right, I'm going in a second. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> mm. You good? <laughs> you burning? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> that work is tough. <laughs> All right, now I'm coming back to life. It was good. It was so good. Okay. Mm. It just burnt my tongue a little bit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Overall, mm. amazing, as always. And that is tender. Dang, you season that well, too. But it's not salty. Not salty, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to take mm. a picture of this. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Elvin, thank you for joining me. Of course. Hope you liked it. Oh. I hope you make it. So Please like, comment. Comment nicely, subscribe, recipe down below, and see you next time. Thank you. Bye -bye.